All right, we've had some questions about the FM transmitter and how exactly it works, especially around using it for a church service or a parking lot concert or other event like that. And so we wanted to give you some ideas around how you might use it and how it works. And just a couple things on FM. Uh, FM is line of sight, even with the FM transmitter. So any obstructions are gonna reduce the signal transmission and make it not go as far. And so we just wanna keep that in mind. Also, if you're in a very populated area with a lot of FM frequencies, this product might not work for you because you might not have a vacant frequency to get a clear signal and there'll be too much noise and interference. So just keep that in mind when you're considering this as an option for uh, your church service or your parking lot uh, event. And uh, let's get started and show you. So this is the FM transmitter and this can be tuned up and down and so, it has full range on the frequency all the way down to the bottom of the 88, all the way up to the 107.7.7. Uh, and so finding an open frequency in a lot of places is, is not too hard. Uh, it also comes with an uh, AC adapter, so it can be plugged in or it can run on uh, two AA batteries. The way this works is it has a stereo input, you plug it into either the line out or into the headphone jack of whatever device you want to transmit from. So it doesn't have to be a radio, it can be any device that has a headphone jack or a line out. In this case, we're just going to show you with the radio just so you get an idea of how it works. So we're going to plug into the line out jack on our CC2E. And we are broadcasting right now on 90.1. might have a problem. You Maybe can see. Mr. Rob was awkward talking about this. Where you? So we're turning that down and we're doing this over 107.6. One thing to mention too is there is an audio input level indicator. And so if it's red, that means the audio is too high coming from this device. And so you can change that level right here and set it so that it's just in the green. You don't want it to be in the red because there'll be some distortion if it gets into the red. And then over here, we have this radio set up on the same frequency over there that we're transmitting, that 107.6. And you can see that same audio is coming through. Now, you can use it with a different device. And so you can use it with a cell phone. And to do that, and just in this case, this cell phone has a headphone jack. You just plug in, just, you won't be able to hear the audio on your phone because that's plugged into the headphone jack. Um, but again, you can control the volume and the input level will, will show on there. And then you come over here and you can see now on that same, on that same frequency, you now have the music that we're transmitting from the transmitter. Some of the newer phones have different connectors. So the newer iPhones and iPads have the lightning connector instead of a headphone jack. And so you'll need a special connector for that. And then this will just plug in. And then this plugs into that lightning connector on the phone. That would be same for like a Samsung if it doesn't have a, um, a headphone jack. And I think it's a C connector for those. We have the different connectors that you can purchase off at Amazon or um, at your local uh, drugstore in a lot of cases. Uh, one of the other questions that we have um, is like for church services. And so on your church service, a lot of times they have different mics. Uh, so the mic I'm using is a powered mic and it has um, the mic out output here and then it has a receiver and we'll do a picture of that receiver and show it plugged in. And so that the FM transmitter would plug into the line out of the receiver and then the audio would get transmitted through. Um, so you can hear that that way. If you have a one of the different mics, like the more traditional mics that have the larger jack on it, you will either need to plug into an amp that has a line out or a headphone jack. Or if you have an audio mixer board that plugs into a stereo system, uh, you can go from the line out or audio out on that or the headphone jack. Uh, this cable is included, and so sometimes you'll have RCA jacks, and then it has a female stereo, and then this plugs in 
to that and then this would plug in like to your stereo or your mixer or your amp if it has these kind of connectors. Uh, this would be true too if you wanted to play your guitar for the neighborhood or you wanted to use some other um, type of instrument. One of the other ways people have uh, been using this is to do like a little drive-in movie theater and they're uh, on their lane or by their driveways. And so if your telev uh, television has a uh, audio output, line output, or it has a headphone jack, it works really well with that. Same thing, you're just gonna plug this in. If it has digital audio, you may need a converter for digital to analog, because this is analog. So keep that in mind, they're available. We don't carry those, but you can search the internet and you'll be able to find them pretty easily. Uh, but we always recommend testing it because sometimes they're built in now. Uh, so just keep that in mind, uh, depending on how you wanna use it. One of the other questions we get is, can I use the FM transmitter to repeat? So this was new for us. We had never tried that before, but turns out you can. So if we plug this back into our radio, or our audio source in this case, we're using the radio. And so I have this here. And again, we have this set up at 107.6. And we're broadcasting that over here on that same frequency, 107.6. And then we have another FM transmitter plugged into the line out and it's at 88.9 and we're broadcasting that signal, we're repeating it over to here. That title wasn't used of Vice Prime Minister. And we're doing that not to show you the distance but just to show you that you can repeat and there's hops. At some point there would probably be loss. We're not sure at what point. We've done it to three radios all through the call center and tested it out and uh, it worked. So it would be interesting to see how far, you, how far you could go that way. You would have to have multiple open frequencies. So every hop is gonna require a different open FM frequency. Another question we've gotten is if you can use it with a 12 volt adapter, uh, like in your cigarette lighter in your car or a 12 volt plug, because most places don't have cigarette lighters anymore. And you can, you need a special adapter and we'll post a link um, on our webpage and then also uh, on our blog post, there'll be a post on, um, in our blog post, there'll be a link to where you can buy something like this. And um, so this plugs into the 12 volt. On here, you can step it down to the correct voltage. So you have to be able to step it down. And then this plugs into the DC on the FM transmitter. And that's how that would work. One of the biggest questions we get is about range and how to improve the range on the FM transmitter. And so a couple of easy solutions, uh, extending this all the way, putting it up higher, going into a clear open space as open and as line of sight as you can make it. Uh, you can also, we have our FM Reflect 2. So we lower this down so we don't break the antenna and clip this on. And then you can extend this wire all the way up as high as you can, and that will improve the range significantly. You may need to play with this and move it around to get the best signal. Um, we've also had people use just plain wire. Uh, you can use it with PVC pipe, just sticking a pole out in the middle of your parking lot or your field where you're or transmitting, and uh, that will work. Uh, you wanna keep it vertically oriented in this situation. And you can use a thumbtack or anything. Uh, if you're on a porch, you can tack it up to the top of your porch. The other option is as a hobbyist, you can search Google and you can search it on ways to improve the range of the FM transmitter too. And you will find ways that other people have improved the range on their FM transmitter. Keep in mind, you need to be compliant with uh, the FCC, and if you're interfering or causing interference with other people's FM reception, uh, you could create a problem for yourself. So just be compliant. And uh, we hope that you find some opportunities to use this. We love hearing about you, the ways you're using this. If you have questions about your particular setup, please email us. Pictures help us out a lot. So if you're saying like, I'm trying to connect this thing to this thing, and you have pictures of it, that really helps us help you. And one of the other things that we've found is uh, finding that vacant frequency is sometimes difficult. And so there's a tool on our webpage, on the FM transmitter page, that lets you put in your zip code and your state 
and it will tell you if there's any vacant FM frequencies. And so like here we've been in Jacksonville, Florida, and you can see there's just no good FM frequency. So this is probably not going to be a good solution. Actually, this is not going to be a good solution for that particular environment. Now over here, you can see in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, at this zip code, we found there's great, good, and okay. So this is probably gonna work quite well in that environment. So keep that in mind that there's a tool. If there's no vacant frequencies, this is just not gonna be a good solution for you. If you have any questions, please contact us. Our 800 number is 1-800-522-8863, or you can go on our website at ccrane.com.